The clock is running and you're not sitting. <laughs> so, uh, RDF has very much been an alien thing for the Ensemble project. We've uh, stayed away from it mainly because we've got more our hands totally full with 70 species and all their assemblies and all the other kinds of things we do. Is that not on? It's not I'm just not picking up the loud. Okay. Um, so the part of Ensemble I want to talk about at the moment is the fact that we aggregate bioinformatics data and we aggregate lots and lots of it. We've got all of the assembly consortiums providing stuff to us um, and our sister project, the Ensemble Genomes team, deal with thousands of protists of various kinds. Um, and then we have the XREF pipeline, for which I am the unfortunate maintainer, that imports foreign databases such as Uniprops and RefSeq and joins all that stuff up with our stuff. Now, that sounds awfully like linked data, but done the old way. And that, that's what got me thinking about a year ago, maybe two years ago, and uh, got invited to a RDF summit, and then we started producing some RDF, and then things got interesting. So the ensemble release cycle looks a little bit like this. We have manual and automatic annotation of various genomes coming at the start. We calculate homologies. We import data from our partners. Then we start, then we bring in variant information from people like dbSNP, and we do our own um, functional genomics analysis to provide regulatory data, and then we release. And this whole thing takes about 12 weeks, and we do it four to five times a year. It's a bit of a grind. Um, now, when it comes to the RDF side of things, uh, we made a prototype last year, and it's kind of lurking. It's for Ensemble Release 77, for those that care. Um, I don't think it's available off-site. I found that out this morning, but never mind. Um, I can get you the data, but it's about 60 gigs. Um, so we have our core 70 species in RDF form in a sort of a, a, static, a static type. Um, I am currently in the process of pipelining the output of stuff so that we can run it every release without fail. So it's taking a long time because it has to be nice and robust. And um, I hope for that to be out by the end of this year. We have a release coming out in December and I'm determined that I should get something out to align with it. Um, also, as part of a longer term goal, we are rewriting our pipeline that brings in external data. And having already mentioned the similarity between what we do and what the linked data community has been up to, uh, I, it's coming to my head that perhaps we can reuse the RDF we're producing for you to put back into our own pipeline. So it looks something like this. So we can produce a static RDF set um, that is based purely on the gene models and what have you. Uh, then we can bring in cross-references and kind of query ourselves. And then at the end of the release cycle, we can produce the kind of the product of our imports of external names and also hopefully the variants. Unfortunately, variants, there are very, very many of them and uh, our first attempt at dumping those in RDF format took a month. So uh, there's a lot of work to be done on that one. So I'm sorry, I can't promise variants anytime soon, but I'm gonna try. Um, so to finish up, the things holding us back at the moment are the threat of the UK 10K overwhelming us entirely, uh, the unstoppable ensemble release machine, which currently takes rather a lot of our time, uh, devi devising a suitable method for working with RDF to generate our connections across multiple links, and persuading people to let me keep working on this, because they raise eyebrows when I talk about it. So I give thanks to Ensemble, our funders, and specifically Biomed Bridges, who got me here this weekend.
Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So next speaker is Tatsuro Ota from DPCS. Um, okay, please start. Okay, five minutes. Um, hi everyone, uh, I'm Tatsuro Ota from DPCS and I'm one of the organizers and I'm gonna talk, give a talk about the Semantic Web Data, Semantic Web Lab project. Um, it's which is I mean the publishing protocols in Wakma, and uh, this is the the last year's by Hacks Wiki, and uh, there are uh, many working groups, and we are um, and uh, the standardization of our EFT working group, and the creating that uh, this Somatic Web Lab project uh, team, uh, which is me and Jean Luc there, and uh, what. We have done you know, what we aimed was the, the providing our new schema and the tools and use cases to capture those scientific um, investigations, um, which includes the planning of the studies, the validation of the resources, and the capturing the raw data and ensuring the data integrity or something like that. And uh, we, we we created the, the schema and the, the model for the you know uh, planning the experiments, which. This is the, the, the experiment which is ha happening in the wet lab, like uh, doing the DNA ex extraction or something, something like that. And the uh, users will do with this model to, to describe the, uh, describing the lab specifications for and the and the attaching the general process model to create a study plan and allocate resources to the study plan and execute experiments and uh, and then get the data and uh, put the data into the, the scheme and uh, you know get the output and it goes like this and then we, we also created our new schema and uh, there here is uh, the images of the, the an image of the, the resources which we created. So um, this time, uh, so these are what we haven't last year. So we want to discuss much more about the model and we want to create the tools and the interface for data input and the reading, browsing the data and querying. And I also have an, I, um, I also want to have a, um, idea of the modeling the experimental protocol for automation of the wet lab experiment and this and I also want to to create a system which is uh, which which can accept uh, the query like uh, you get the uh, difference differentially express gene release from sample A and B so the machine will create a study plan and then execute it by robots or something like that so um, and then uh, so I, I'm going to try these tasks, and uh, I also look forward to to making the collaboration with other um, people, like uh, like a smart pro protocol by Alexander, which is uh, you know uh, there were there there was a talk by him in the, the last session, and uh, I also want to, to have a collaboration with the data processing pipeline and the workflows, like a common workflow language by Peter and uh, Bionaut by Bruno, and I also um, try to make it make some um, the plan to to work with the, the world initiatives and the standards like a research object at all, and. Uh, I will still have one minute. So, um, so I, I'm going to. I want. I want to introduce my uh, my view of the future, uh, which is uh, which is enabled by uh, introducing the, the semantic web uh, semantic web into the white love. And so here's uh, the the flow of the science. And here and there are uh, so many repositories now and to to archive the project of the uh, of the the study and the sample information and the primary data and the publication and then we we also have uh, the Docker or common workflow language to 
to share the data processing, but we, we are missing the wet to experiments part. So we need to create a super cool framework here and uh, put the, everything into one box. And uh, the box is going to the automatic lab and the supercomputer just and uh, make everything automatically. So um, so this is my you know, ultimate goal. So I am going to have, uh, you know, interesting discussion here and there. I need to, I hope this week will be uh, one step closer to this feature. Thank you. The next speaker is Robert. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. Oops. Oops. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Please start. Ah. Hello. I'm Robert uh, from Kaust in Saudi Arabia, and I want to give an update on on Aberal. So this was essentially I presented this last year also as a lightning talk, and essentially this was um, one way in which we could um, insert a little bit semantics in, in Sparkle queries. So we could, for example, use our reasoning, description logic reasoning, as part of a query to retrieve in Uniprot all proteins which are associated with a part of apoptosis. And we can actually still run this, so this still works. So this was from, uh, from last year, so it was essentially just a way to rewrite queries <coughs> And it still works. Yes, ah, there, there we go. So these are all uh, annotations, and these are Go classes, which are part of M apoptosis. And I want to give an update on what we have done. So last year, this was basically working last year. It's a very tiny interface. Um, and you can still use this. And we had about 10 ontologies last year. And now we have updated this, uh, essentially. And to become a proper uh, repository of ontologies, we have host all the ontologies in BioPortal and a few more. So you can actually you can just search for thing, things. You can do something like this. And uh, there are many classes being returned, so it takes a while. But uh, you get all the, uh, all the classes and all these ontologies where apoptotic process occurs. Um, and also do something like this. And what you see is actually these queries are answered in real time using uh, a description logic reasoner. So you can do classes for equivalent classes, you can search for equivalent classes, and so on. So this is actually coming directly from an OWL reasoner. And then we have, you can do what, what you can do in normal ontology repositories, so we can look at ontologies, and there are all of them there. Some of them, they don't work um, because the owl is broken. But this is Sire in, in overall, and um, you, can, you can look at classes. I mean, it's essentially what you are come to expect, only it's a little bit faster than possibly BioPortal, um, maybe. Um, and you can do this. So what you can also do, so this is, um, let's take a, so we have to scroll, but I don't know how to scroll on a, on a MacBook. But this is essentially plutonium. We can still search uh, PubMed, so you can actually run uh, descriptive logic queries, and this retrieves all the articles in which plutonium atom or one of its subclasses occurs, and you can write complex statements. So if you want to search for all PubMed articles where part of an arm or part of a, a leg or part of the uh, respiratory system occurs, you can do the same thing. You just have to write your description logic query up here, and uh, uh, you will uh, you can run this. Um, you also get, you do, we have uh, apparently bio to RDF, we also have an index of bio to RDF, um, but apparently there's, well, so you can actually do, um, oh, well, um, usually you can also query bio to RDF. Uh, you can visualize the ontologies, 
and its relations. So you can actually explore like part of trees. And the cool thing is, all of this, including this tree view and, and all, all, the, all, the, all the links in this graph, are generated in real time using a description logic reasoning. So uh, there's nothing preloaded. It's not Sparkle. It's not RDF. It's proper all. And all these 411 ontologies at the moment, they are all accessible through a reasoner. You have, we have a full-fledged API, a REST API, where you can just, uh, if you want to use a Manchester all query, so part of some apoptosis, part of some apoptotic process, you want to use this in, in something, you can just send it there and you get all the answers back. And uh, that's essentially it. Faster than Bioportal? Uh, you have to ask Bioportal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really have to ask Bioportal. Uh, I, I have no idea. Um, and we have about 300 users a month now, and it's rapidly increasing as well. So we, there are people who use this because it's faster than Bioportal, a lot faster. Okay, thank you. So, Philip Cancer, his presentation. So, the uh, next speaker is Naki Sagoto from Biologie. Uh, I'm Naki Sagoto from Osaka University. And I'm uh, talking about Biologie. Uh, Biologie is bioinformatic software library looking that we like. And, and it's free really open source software. And currently, uh, in July, uh, we release new version 1.5. In this version, uh, it is a maintenance release, so main, uh, main update to support new Ruby versions and graphics and recovery. And uh, I thought that uh, some classes using remote API are removed because of service discontinuity. And so, JDT uh, classes are removed. And some classes like uh, SPTR, Swissplot, and Prune are given to Uniplot KD. Um, and so, uh, here is a brief history of Biology. Uh, we are continue, uh, we start uh, 2000 uh, and we are continuing developing uh, about 15 years. And so, I I want to release in version uh, soon. And uh, over 15 years, uh, over 30 people around the world are uh, involved in biology development. <coughs> and someone uh, attended in this conference. And uh, here is the current status of biology. Uh, there are many hundreds of files and many uh, large codes. And there are uh, many functions uh, uh, available in biology. Uh, and in that addition, uh, we uh, planning system is available uh, and over hundreds of packages are available. And uh, this is my plan uh, to do in during and after this hackathon. Uh, first, uh, for improvements, uh, I want to improve uh, some classes, uh, like sitting six and gym bank, uh, for better RDL import output, uh, important output data for RDL. And to simplify uh, some classes structure and uh, to do refactoring. And uh, as I said, uh, there are too many files and uh, functions in one binary package. So I want to split independent function component in several binary packages for using maintenance source. 
Okay. If you are interested, please join us. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. My name was in the slide, but uh, these three, five years, the uh, maintenance and uh, releasing is made by Kaposan. So thank you for you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, next speaker is Shuichi Kaoshima from Delicious, describing about an NCBA, uh, upcoming NPDC project. So please start. Hi, I'm Shuichi Kaoshima from DBCLS. So, uh, on the behalf of LBDC and DBCLS, uh, I'd like to introduce a new portal site of RDF data. And uh, uh, the name, portal site's name is NBDC RDF portal. And uh, NBDC, National Bioscience Database Center, is major sponsor of this hackathon. And NBDC uh, also uh, Funded several uh, database projects in Japan, and one of the uh, objectives of NBDC funding is uh, to support making data in Japan open as RDF. So to date, uh, the funding funded groups uh, have been developing uh, the RDF data from their data or from their database. Then uh, we noticed that uh, we need a website uh, to provide uh, newly developed RDF data like EBI RDF port, uh, platform. So uh, we think uh, gathering RDF data in one place is, uh, is uh, useful for users uh, to find uh, RDF data they need. So for that purpose, uh, NPDC and DBCRS have started to develop a portal site to provide uh, RDF, uh, RDF data uh, developed by funded groups and also other RDF, uh, develop, uh, other RDF data developed by uh, group, uh, other groups in Japan. And uh, a key feature uh, of the RDF uh, in this portal uh, is uh, that developers are recommended uh, to follow uh, a guideline uh, we made. Uh, we, we call this guideline uh, NBDC RDF Fighting Database Guideline. And this guideline uh, is a set of simple rules. And the rules are such as uh, developers should prepare a label to each instance or uh, each class, or developers should provide uh, provenance information and so on. So uh, because uh, the almost developers in the groups are not expert to semantic web technologies, uh, we think the such kind of uh, the guideline is useful to control the RDF quality. And we have uh, so currently uh, those uh, RDF, RDF dataset have been submitted to NBDC. So uh, you can see. Uh, the dataset covers a broad range uh, of topics. And uh, unfortunately, this, this portal site is still under development now, but hopefully uh, we will launch uh, the, this site by October 5. So uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. From DBCRS. On the D2RQ, I guess. Oh, Keynote. <laughs> okay. 
いですか。Okay, so please. Ah, I'm Yasunori Yamamoto from Data Center for Data Science, and I'm talking about digital to macro. So we are now developing. So,、um, have you ever been tried digital to? It's、uh, ah yeah, it's very good system, and we also tried. So this is a system for accessing relational database as virtual read-only RDF graph. So and by using this system, you can query a non-RDF database using Sparkle, and also access the content of the database as linked data over the web. Also, create custom dumps of the database in RDF formats for loading into an RDF store, and also and access information in non-RDF database. Using Apache Jira API, so and this、uh, this is a diagram or architecture data RQ system. So by using this system,、uh, so if you have already、uh, some data sets in、uh, MySQL or PostgreSQL, you can use this data, and also、uh, you can access to this data by using a Sparkle query. But if you want、uh, use this data using、uh, RDF or Sparkle, you have to write down this data RQ mapping file. So on this, you satisfied with an automatically generated one because the data RQ already has a tool to generate this mapping file automatically based on the schema of the my SQL or Postgre database. But it's not so、uh, good, or maybe you can't. Satisfied with this automatically generated file, so this is a kind of a mapping file. So you have to write down this turtle file by using a text editor. So it's not so、uh, good or convenient for you to write this kind of mapping file. So we are now developing this data、uh, library mapper. So this is an、uh, assistant or a web application that assists you to. A、create a mapping file. So by using this application, you can edit it on a web-based interface, and also、uh, by using this、uh, application, you can make errors as little as possible because、uh, the web interface <coughs> provides you uh, uh, formats of、uh, checkbox or radio box and, and the product menu, so you can't write down anything from scratch. And this system can read schema from database. So、uh, also this、uh, application can generate automatically from some、uh, mapping. So just、uh, customize the mapping file by using this system. And so you can create a file for an RDB within your internet.、Uh, okay. So this is the interface of this application. So first,、uh, when you log into this application, so you have to、uh, set up a database to the、uh, MySQL or Postgre you are now using. So first,、uh, that you have to write down the name of the mapping file, and then you have to write some、uh, parameters for the databases like、uh, port numbers and also database name or password or username and so on. Then you, you can see this、uh, column of the database you specified. So after that, you just、uh, click one of the uh, data uh, tables, and also、uh, just you can see the columns of the table you specified, and just check、uh, one of them. So the subject and predicate and object. So you can just.、Uh, Click or write down one of the patterns of the URI you have to、uh, you want to make. So that kind of things. Just after doing that, you can done and、uh, you can get the everything the mapping file of the data RQ. So it's very、uh, easy to use. And so、uh, if you want use、uh, this tool in、uh, within your intranet. Uh, you can get a local image of the, this application. So, please try to this URI, and just this is two commands. You、uh, just、uh, once you get this、uh, command, 
you can use this application. Thank you very much. Okay, so sorry, this mark is a bit old. <laughs> okay, so the next speaker is Art <coughs> Benchen from the Dagra. Um, I'm Arthur Pai, uh, that's the Finnish cognate for Arthur. And I'm here in a dual capacity. On the one hand, um, I'm the creator of RDF RB. That's the Ruby toolkit for linked data, which I hear many, many, many of you use. Uh, so if you have any any questions about that, um, feel free to hit me up over the next week. Uh, now my day job is uh, something called Dyra, which I think will also be of interest to to many of you, and that's what I've been asked to speak about. Uh, so I can introduce Dyra by referring to the problem that I think it was Raul uh, who mentioned earlier, or many of you have mentioned actually during the day in lunch conversations and elsewhere, that researchers shouldn't have to become DBAs in, in order to, they shouldn't have to become database administrators in order to do their work. And right now, as you many, many of you know, you do have to um, wrangle with uh, uh, Java installation practices, uh, how, how to run Tomcat, all kinds of things that really aren't all that necessary. And this is something that my colleagues and I we realized uh, some some years ago. Uh, this is not a problem specific to bioinformatics. And uh, our answer was to uh, make a cloud service, which we conceived of originally as something like uh, GitHub for data. Namely, you can upload your RDF data in any of the formats you prefer, um, and you get a Sparkle endpoint. Uh, so in five minutes, you can go from having a flat to dump RDF data dump to having something that you can run Sparkle queries on. And this, this includes, um, this is how it looks like. Uh, this is a screenshot of uh, Dan Bridgley's a repository uh, for the schema.org ontology that he works on at Google. Uh, you may be familiar with, with this ontology. Um, you, you get something that looks, I suppose, relatively familiar to anybody who's a GitHub user. So you, you, you get this um, little sidebar. Um, you, you have your ability to import data. There's a query editor, which I don't have a screenshot of, but you can just look at this over there. Um, you you get uh, um, the ability to create materialized views, which are just named Sparkle queries. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, Mr. Bridgley has created some of this. Um, there are some social features. I, I won't go into those. Um, this is pretty pretty simple uh, to to get access. Uh, you just enter your email. Uh, we still have a manual sign up process, but you know we'll we'll see that you're a real person, not a robot, and we'll give you an account. And for, we have a lot of academic users. Um, a lot of professors use this in their classwork, use it to um, teach the fundamentals of RDF and Sparkle, and uh, a lot of students do their homework and their assigned projects using Dyra. Some of the universities that use us are depicted there. And uh, feature-wise, what you can expect is um, we are Sparkle 1.1 compliant. We have a test suite for that. 
uh, model the usual caveats that everybody has. Um, and uh, we do a lot of things that go beyond Sparkle. Um, we, first of all, I think our most important feature beyond that is uh, we do revisioning. So every single change, every transaction you commit on your data repository, it creates a new revision and you can access previous revisions of data. Uh, you, can, you, can even, you can even do things like um, um, uh, temp temporal federation. You can get, for instance, uh, you can write a Sparkle query that, that shows you all the differences, all the new classes added, or all the new properties added since some version, or removed. Uh, you can do things that uh, are quite quite interesting to conceive of in Sparkle once you add the temporal dimension. Uh, you should see our blog. Blog has some some information about that. That's something we just recently wrote out publicly. And there's uh, there's a lot of uh, other things, but you can uh, you can look those up on the site, or, or we can talk about them offline. So that's that's uh, pretty much everything on that. And my goals are uh, on the one hand to basically be tech support for you all uh, in this week. If there's a need to get up a Sparkle endpoint, I'll, I'll get that done. Um, and happy to talk about RDFRB and things like revision and whatnot. Thank you. from DBCS and my, my talk is uh, uh, we are all of publicly available gene expression data. So um, I came from DBCS but uh, uh, my situation is a little bit different and uh, DBCS is a institute and uh, this is uh, under the ROIS and uh, another institute in the Mishima area, uh, Mishima is a, a Shizuoka Prefecture, and uh, this is a uh, National Institute of Genetics, NIG, and uh, DDBJ is, is under the uh, NIG, and uh, uh, we, uh, five uh, researchers uh, from uh, DBCS is uh, in uh, an NIG, and uh, not affiliated to DDBJ, but uh, we, we are in, in this fraction, and the NBDC is different, so uh, this is very complicated in uh, Japanese Institute, but uh, please do uh, remember uh, this situation for uh, some financial uh, uh, aspect in, in Japan. So, and, uh, so uh, in DDBJ, uh, they are carrying uh, INSDC, uh, International, uh, uh, International Nucleotide Sequence Data Collaboration, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, something like that. And they are, uh, uh, they are storing the traditional uh, sequence data, it's the sequence, and, sample and study information and uh, all, uh, uh, currently all the trace uh, sequence data in the SANA type and then now is a, a very big uh, SRA uh, next generation reads in the, in the store in the SRA so uh, this is very huge and uh, my, my uh, interest is uh, I'm from um, transcriptomics uh, area so I want to uh, make use of uh, gene expression data in public for uh, all the uh, web researchers. So I'm, I'm now uh, tackling uh, uh, in, uh, this, this part. Uh, 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 traditionally, uh, micro, uh, gene expression data is in a an, an, uh, microarray form, and uh, they are stored to the GEO, gene expression omnibus, or Alex Place database in EBI. So this was different, but uh, now uh, in, uh, gene expression data is is, uh, was pro uh, is produced from uh, NGS reads, so they are uh, called uh, RNA seq. This is uh, this part, and this sequence, uh, 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 some part are uh, stored in Gale or AliExpress, but uh, some are not. So this is uh, uh, my uh, background, as, uh, my motivation for this research. So not all the RNA seq data are deposited to Gale and AliExpress. Uh, so they should be, uh, we want to reuse them 
for the, our, our research uh, to re reduce the experiments. So uh, we want to correct them. So I, so in DBCS we, we have made a gene, gene expression data index in, in uh, many years, and the, now uh, in that uh, is formed form in the ROE, EOE, all, the, all of gene expression in uh, this URL. So uh, I want to make uh, some modification to AOI to include uh, include the uh, uh, RNA-seq data. So uh, in this hackathon, I want to do uh, update the system for AOI and uh, to um, include the RNA-seq data extraction from the SRA database. So uh, we I want to work with uh, um, a, uh, oh, oh, uh, Mr. Ota and uh, uh, Dr. Nakazato, uh, they, they are very uh, fluent in uh, SRA metadata. So I want to do work with them, and uh, we want. I want. I also want to update the AOE interface, and this will be uh, work with the uh, OSAN over there. So um, thanks for uh, your attention. Uh, and one more thing, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, we are our team is uh, making a Kobo TV. Uh, this uh, you are. Your lecture will, will be included in a Togo TV system, so please uh, take a look at Togo TV in, uh, uh, afterwards. So, uh, thanks for your attention. <laughs> Sorry. Eject. Okay. I'm Takeshi Kawashima. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, uh, briefly uh, what I'd like to do in this hackathon. Uh, I'm an uh, evolutionary biologist. I'm especially uh, interested to the uh, animal <coughs> diversity and evolutions. So I was uh, joined to the many uh, whole genome uh, projects pre uh, before. Uh, and all, my interest is evolution. So I would, these, uh, uh, all, all these are uh, covered the most of the uh, animal diversity from the, uh, the non bioteria or by all, all type of three bioterians or uncoded. Uh, one of the strong points uh, point for the whole gen, uh, data for phylogeny is uh, we can get uh, deep branching time from the uh, concatenated or uh, author of data. So uh, now, recently, uh, uh, we can get uh, uh, very uh, good uh, branching time data uh, from the phylogenetic tree. And also, the, of course, the fossils and the uh, earth geological data uh, can give us uh, um, branching time data. So, uh, a combination with a phylogenetic tree and uh, geological data is now very good. And uh, <coughs> this is one example. The uh, recent uh, evolutionary biologist's interest is uh, previously the Cambrian explosion was very famous, but the other uh, famous big uh, event in Earth is not uh, related to the uh, diverse uh, branching time, big branching time of the phylogeny. So uh, my interest is now is uh, how to combine the phylogeny, uh, branching, uh, phylogenetic tree with uh, absolute time uh, and uh, Association with uh, uh, geological data and fossils. Um, recently, uh, still, the many uh, evolutionary biologists to choose the favorite fossil data only. But I think if we combine the all type of fossil data and uh, all type of phylogenetic tree data combined, we can find uh, some uh, new findings for these relationships. So what I'd like to do is, and such kind of data for. Uh, tools for phylogeny and the database for geology are already exist. So what I should do now is uh, making a very uh, utilized application. So I'd like to do a very draft application within uh, this week. 
So uh, please discuss with me or give a suggestion to uh, the person who are a specialist for these uh, themas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so all right. Good evening. Uh, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about my background and then just talk about some of the projects that I'm working on that I think are interesting to this community. Uh, I come from a computer science background, I'm not a biologist, I'm learning terminology as I go along, but um, sometimes when somebody gets deep into phylogeny, I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, but I'm a free software developer, developer advocate, um, you know, I, my area is applying for big data techniques to cluster computing uh, techniques to analyzing very large uh, genome data sets. Uh, things like you know, the people mentioned X10 sequencing data produces huge amounts of uh, X10 sequencing produces huge amounts of data. We need ability we need the ability to build computational pipelines that can handle that. Um, and also interested in RDF, which is very interesting. Um, I'm the co-chair of the Containers and Workflows group of the GA4GH, and I work on Arvados. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, Arvados is a free software, commercially supported uh, stack for cluster computing and cloud computing. Uh, there's two major components. Uh, Keep is a content addressed distributed file system. It uh, allows you to store very large files uh, efficiently uh, and retrieve them. It stores files by content address, that means that they are you, you use hash identifiers to, to reference files. So when you have that identifier allows you to uniquely identify the content of that file. If the file changes, that identifier changes. And this is very important for provenance because you can now identify, you can now, you now have a strong self-certifying confidence that some data set that you used, <clears throat> as long as that identifier is the same, the data set itself could, it doesn't change. And this is the basis of uh, the Arvados computational system called Crunch, which uses Keep, Git, and Docker to provide a reproducible computational environment so that a pipeline run on Arvados can be very easily uh, rerun with a single click, and you have strong uh, <coughs> confidence that all of the input data is the same, and that you can also check the output data very easily by comparing these content hashes. So, uh, second thing I want to talk about is uh, the common workflow language. This is an open source, uh, multi-vendor standards effort to develop a system for, uh, develop a, a standard for uh, bioinformatics workflows uh, this is, we want to, be, to make it possible for bioinformaticians to develop workflows that can be authored and then uh, once and run on many different vendor systems, vendor platforms. So an HPC system, a cloud computing system, um, and that, that might be using Arvados, it might be using Galaxy, it might be using some HPC software. Uh, and this is uh, specifications currently on its second draft. Uh, we're working on a third draft. There are implementations of CWL in progress, and uh, it's probably I'll be working on that. That's one of my goals for Biohackathon. Uh, the third thing I wanted to just briefly touch on is a project I'm working on called Schema Salad. This is a schema language for working with uh, JSON and our YAML documents. Uh, to be able to <coughs> validate them and work with them as JSON and YAML, but automatically convert them to uh, RDF through JSON-LD. Um, the sort of reason why this exists is that JSON-LD is really 
uh, useful for marking up a JSON document, but it doesn't actually provide a schema language to go with it. So if you want to work with data in JSON or YAML, uh, as well as having sort of a linked data representation, you have to maintain a JSON schema and a JSON-LD document and human documentation and an RDFS, doc RDFS model and an OWL model and you know, keeping all those things in sync is ridiculous. So the schema salad gives you one file that you can describe all of your structured data and then convert that into all these different, um, uh, all the other sort of documents that you need. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, the next speaker is uh, Corinne. From Novakula. Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Colin Herkus from a company called Novacraft in Malaysia. I was kindly invited here by Nagasaki University and the Biohackathon people. Um, I want to just quickly run through some of the things I do, not not from our company as a way of advertising our company, but to let you know what I do and where the expertise lays. So if I press this, goes the right way. We're a small Malaysian company. We've got about 10 people in Malaysia. Um, we've got several products out there, alignment tools, um, a workbench tool for running pipelines, and we do some service and consulting work. Um, yeah, we'll skip some of these quickly. We have a program called Nova Align. Many of you, maybe your bioinformaticians who are doing the sequencing, may be using it. Nagasaki University is using it. There's a lot of people using it. Um, if you have a look at um, some of the things it does, it's multi threaded, there's an MPI version which we're running on BioWolf clusters and clusters of Cray computers in some, some places. It does a lot of um, functions in the alignment, like trimming adapters and low quality trimming that other people were doing before they align. And if you look at the rock curves, these are some rock curves that are published by Heng Lee as part of his BWA MEM paper. We're probably the most accurate aligner in sensitivity and specificity that's, that's out there at the moment. It's not the fastest, but it's pretty accurate. Okay, so um, that's all done in C++, and I've programmed all of it. So, that, so um, we also have a sort merge program. And some of the text is missing here. It should be called Nova Sort up there in the right. I don't know what's happened to the colours. So we were getting a bit frustrated with our pipelines with um, SAM tool sort. So we wrote a sort ourselves. It's multi-threaded. Um, it does mark duplicates functions while it's while it's running the sort, and very soon it's going to do quality base quality recalibration while it's doing the sort, and it generally runs at least three to four times faster than SAM tools and Picard sort SAM, even when you're running multi-threaded versions of those programs. So it's there. Um, so you know, it's making things run fast is one of the things that we do. Um, so it does the remove duplicates functions. Um, I think again, there's a heading missing one there. We've also been doing some work with pack bio reads, and we've recently worked with the University of Malaysia in Sabah to assemble the pineapple genome. Um, they did pack bio reads and Illumina reads, and we used Nova Align and a new um, consensus calling program to correct the pack bio reads and do the assembly. While we were doing this work, someone else published a pineapple genome. And I think in the chloroplast part, we had one base pair different. We, we worked out we were correct, and at least for our pineapple, they were wrong. <laughs> um, so we've got the program to correct long reads. The heading again is missing off here. Um, so we correct pack bio reads by aligning them in consensus calling. So we've got our own pile up caller for that. Um, let's get through those. We've also got a workbench product that basically runs pipelines. It's fairly simple. You can go and set up a project and press the button and it'll run your pipeline through to variant calling and variant annotation. 
um, interesting thing there that I'm going to learn from here. Um, when we're doing the variant annotation, I think we're accessing 10 databases and loading 10 different databases into our system. So this type of work where maybe we only have one database to reference to annotate our variants would be good. So we do that as a pipeline. That's called NovoWorks. Again, part of the heading is missing somewhere in the conversion here. Um, and the, okay, so one more slide get back. This has disappeared. We, we have a, another product called Nova Clinic. We're working with one of the hospitals in Malaysia to do a clinical application where they're going to put their whole exome samples in. We'll go through to variant calling. Um, they're doing a study on leukemia and this system will be not, not just variant calling, but it'll be annotating their SNPs as a clinical thing, but following it through um, multiple samples. So they'll, they'll sequence the exome, and then they'll treat the patient, and then they'll sequence the exome maybe a month later, and maybe three months later, and see how the variant's are changing due to the treatment and how the patient's responding to it. So all that information is kept in the system. All right, so that's it. We've got a lot of users. Uh, around the world, including Nagasaki University. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, so the last talk will be given by Mark. This will work. Okay. So, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Mark Thompson. I was uh, planning to be here with my colleague, uh, Case Burger, but unfortunately he couldn't make it at the very, very last moment because of uh, a medical emergency in his family. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll present what, uh, what he did and, and, and the prototype that uh, Case made. So, uh, we are from the Biosemantics Group in the Leiden University uh, Medical Center. And there we do uh, all kinds of uh, projects related to in silico knowledge discovery uh, based on the substrate of knowledge graphs. And these are sometimes RDF graphs and sometimes other types of graphs. But what is consistent in, in all the, the things that we do is that at some point uh, we show a tool to a user. And this is typically domain expert. And when they see some result coming out of one of these knowledge graphs, they say, I see a mistake here. <laughs> this this should not, is not right. I, I know this stuff. And this link is not correct. So we have been thinking how to deal with that, right? So one thing is you could go back to the data source and, and, and start a discussion with the data owner. Can we please fix this link? It takes way too long. The, the, the data, uh, the knowledge expert will be long gone by then. It's not that they're not willing to help, but it's just that the amount of time that they can invest in fixing uh, a part of the knowledge graph is just quite limited, right? We can also store it locally in, in, in a tool or something, but then this, this curation or this annotation would not be reusable and, and would not be uh, accessible to anyone. So we've proposed a, a solution to that and it works a little bit, it works like this. So, <clears throat> so on the top here, uh, uh, assume that's a, a, a tool based on some kind of, showing some kind of knowledge graph that a user can use, but he spots a mistake. Um, then we propose that there's just a, a link from there with a bookmarklet or a button or something like that to, um, select one statement from that knowledge graph and say, I want to annotate this. And then at that moment, the user is redirected to a web application that allows him to annotate that uh, single statement from that knowledge graph. And that's a, a, a tool that we provide and that we have a, a small prototype for. So first we wanna know actually who is this curator that's now gonna say something about this statement. Uh, that's important because we wanna attribute to that person and we also maybe want to know, can we uh, you know, trust this, uh, this annotation that's being made? So at the moment we implement a sort of authentication with, with ORCID. Uh, maybe in the future we'll also support other uh, authentication mechanisms. Um, and then the next step for the user would be uh, to allow, to go through our, yeah, be redirected again to our uh, web application. And then he actually gets to, to edit this statement 
So it, it's really very simple. So in this case, uh, we can uh, adjust the, uh, the, the, the predicate that connects these two concepts, maybe add a little uh, motivation in, in just uh, in a little note. And then when he presses submit, we turn this annotation into a nano publication. So that's uh, uh, then a, a self-contained um, yeah, semantic digital object, let's say. And we publish that in a nano publication store um, so that this annotation may now be reused for, uh, for all kinds of purposes. So the user, meanwhile, uh, should be redirected maybe back to his uh, tool where he started, or maybe the user does something else completely different, but at least his little piece of knowledge is then captured. Right, so uh, we have a, a prototype for that. Maybe uh, during this week, at some point, I can show it to whoever is uh, interested. And why are we here? Well, first of all, because uh, we are at the stage now, I think, for this tool that we'd really like your feedback and know if you find it you know, uh, useful, if you think this is a good approach to capture this kind of um, expert knowledge. Uh, if you have ideas about how to integrate it with other tools, or, or if you have a tool that you would like to integrate this kind of annotation uh, surface with, then uh, please let me know. Uh, yeah, also about sort of the features that are implemented or that you think should be implemented, uh, the, the, the interface, if you have suggestions for that, or basically any other kind of suggestions, we'll, we'll be happy to, uh, to hear from you. Um, so, thank you.